Hi everybody, this is Sam with Python Basics and we are going to be going over a better way to find prime numbers. So, if you recall, we did it this clunky, really kind of crappy way. But, this is the first way that I learned. Because actually, I uh, found an exercise just so you can understand the challenge that I had it was I needed to find I think it was like the hundredth prime number or something like that it was a challenge that I ran across so the way that I thought about it was I was gonna have to count and I wanted to put them in a group so that's the way I did it so instead of just counting which is what I should have done I just thought about the first thing that came to mind was put it in a list well if I was gonna count the prime numbers and put them in a list I thought well I could count the divisors well the more I did this and the more I read and the more that I learned there are much better ways to to do this so let's just go ahead and get started so we're gonna take in a number and use our input Enter number, and then we're gonna run run a test against it. Range, and if you remember, definition of a prime is the reason why it's so such a good test is for uh, programming is you have to go through and think of the situation. So you have to think about it, a prime number is a number that is only divisible by one in itself. So if any other number in between those two is a divisor, and a divisor is any number that divides in evenly, and I actually have a video on, on that, but if you're not quite sure, oops, and I'm forgetting a keyword. Keywords are in orange if you haven't seen that video either. Um, for I in range, all right, so we already know that one is a divisor. Then, to remind you, this is inclusive and this is exclusive. So we don't have to test the last number because we know it's a divisor. So this is going to go up into, but not include, x. So then we did, we did something real clunky. If this is div, uh, divisible, um, then to throw this into a list. Well, I ran across a word probably about a year after I did this challenge that is very handy. The keyword, it's a new keyword, it's called break. And what that does is it does exactly what it says. It throws, it breaks, it stops exactly where it is. So let's just, let me just show you how to do this. So, um, here, we'll do it without break so you're able to see it. For I in range to, okay. If x, we have to use our modulo because this is going to give our remainder. So if you don't know what this is, let's start with, you need to go and watch the divisor video and the modulo video. All right. So i equals zero print. We're going to do this a, a little bit so you can see this build and go from there. Is not prime. So and then else print is. So we're going to go through this. So let's just run this to remember. Let's do four. Oops. Ah, look at what I did. We got to make an int because this is a word uh, you may have only heard me say. Input, the, M, the default 
when this gets created goes in as a string so we have to convert it to an int and I have a video on that too it goes more in depth let's just get me going on this enter a number four all right is not a prime is not a prime or is, is not a prime is prime so the way I want you to think about this is so we went through we tested two then we tested three so two goes in evenly and it kicks out is not prime then three goes in is I on these and it comes out like this so this isn't really the test so this is what I want to show you so now here's the word that is going to be our new keyword break so remember how right here if this condition was met if we found a divisor that was not if it is in this group and it's if it's a divisor I want you to think about this if it's in this group any of these if it's a divisor it's not a prime number because we're testing every condition except the two that are that make it a prime number one it's not included and our actual number is not included because this goes up into this is exclusive so now now let's run this again four is not a prime let's run it again and let's do what 11 is a prime is a prime is a prime is a prime okay so this is a little a little still clunky so now now we're going to change this just a touch more so, all right so there's still a condition there that is still meeting and going through so what I'm doing right here this took me a long time to get so we have to be able to catch and have a time when it will show us what a prime number is so if you look on all of our other conditions I uh, had three three videos on conditions we had these in a, in a row in a line so this is the way I want you to think about this this right here if any of these are met it should throw that it's not a prime and then stop well we're only trying to catch any of these so now if you look real close this else is outside the very last thing that this is going to do is it's going to throw if 11 is a prime this is still why we need the else to sit here because I will show you if we comment this out let's comment this out let me just show you if we get rid of this you might say why do we need the else right there because we still need to only do it is a prime but then let's check this against um, oops too many check this against 12 because what this is doing is it's proceeding down here and printing out this last thing that's why we need the else to only do this if none of these other conditions were met so let's indent this all right so now now let's wrap this this is still where we're having to call this so now let's wrap this in a function so yeah let's put this inside the function too so all right and that this is the term called wrapping in a function is prime so now now the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to show you that we don't even need the break. I'm going to show you another way and more upon more about the return keyword. So all right, um, 
just gonna run this and then call is prime. So is prime 30, uh, 31. If now we're gonna call this enter 31 is prime. So now, now let's say you are going to need to use this to count or figure out the hundredth or a thousandth or a millionth prime number. So these print statements aren't going to get the job done. So now I'm also going to show you a way that you don't need this. So, return false, and I'll, I'll prove it to you here in a second. Return true. So, all right. Let's see. Uh, we'll call, we'll just get going on these. So, we won't have to call this each time. this to x so we don't get input so what I did right there is I'm taking an argument here and it's going in there I'm hardwiring this okay is prime uh, what let's check three let's check six let's check eleven Let's check. Now, I'll just show you this because, well, I'll run it and I'll show you. All right, so now there's one hiccup here. These are returning. I'm not actually having anything happen. So I'm gonna run this, nothing happens. So you actually have to wrap these because we want stuff to happen. Because right now, I'm, just, I'm not actually doing anything with this. So I forgot to tell you that. So let's copy these. Paste, paste, paste. What I say? Um, six, eleven, eleven, and then at yeah, thirty-one, right? Okay, let's run this. So true, false, true, true. So next time, now I'm gonna. Sh ne next time I'll show you. Oh, actually no. Let me pr prove this to you. That we don't need the break so I commented this out and I'll make a comment here okay so you might say well whoa 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 why don't we need this break okay here is a rule in Python after it hits a return you can put absolutely anything any instructions underneath of it in that indentation and it won't do anything it's called dead code so I don't need I don't need a return it will not come down here and execute this under any circumstances because it caught this return right here so it stops everything that's doing and spits out and it's done performing anything on is prime so that is a very very important key so now this is a much much shorter version of this and when you're talking about very large numbers maybe ne next time I'll show you how to actually time this we'll, we'll do something uh, pretty cool but I want you to compare this one two three four five six seven eight compared to one two three four five so almost almost half almost half as many lines of code and and also if this in in really in actuality if this finds a divisor it stops so it does not cycle through the entire series so this is a much more efficient way so all right i hope you guys are enjoying this thanks for watching don't forget to click the subscribe button and we'll see you next time thanks